Since Russia invaded Ukraine last year, Moscow has continued its clampdown on independent media within its borders. Many Russian journalists fled rather than risk imprisonment for not towing the government's line. One of them is journalist Mikhail Ziger, whose book, War and Punishment, Putin, Zelensky, and the Path to Russia's Invasion of Ukraine is coming out in July. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You left Moscow for, for Berlin on February 27th, 2022. Yeah. That was three days after the invasion. You said it was clear you had to leave. Why? You know, I felt like it was my moral obligation. I knew that you cannot live in a fascist country. And if your country invades another independent country, you have to fight against it. I, I was, uh, like, the first hours after the invasion, uh, I've written an open letter that was co-signed by Russia's uh, prominent writers, uh, filmmakers, and then after, afterwards uh, it was uh, reposted and signed by uh, millions of Russians. But that was obvious that uh, we, I could not stay uh, inside the country um, because yeah, I might have been imprisoned immediately for spreading fakes uh, about Russian army. Has anyone in your circle of journalistic friends or, or colleagues remained in Russia? And what are you hearing from them? Some of my friends are so bold and brave and crazy, I would say. So they, they, they deliberately stay. They know uh, how much risk uh, is that. But, still, but uh, they chose that super risky way to, to stay in Moscow. They live um, expecting the, the police or someone... Uh, some security forces to, to come to interrogate or to uh, search in their apartments every single day, every single morning. Uh, but they, they are still working, they are um, blogging, they are um, having their U YouTube channels. It's hard. The country is really depressed. Those journalists who continue working as independent journalists uh, inside the country, they are very depressed with that illusionary atmosphere that nothing has changed. And are they able to post their work on YouTube, on the Internet? You know, YouTube is still not blocked in Russia. And uh, you might know that uh, YouTube has a very, uh, really important role in Russia because all the traditional TV channels are propaganda. So YouTube is being watched as proper television by those Russians who oppose this war. And YouTube is still working and it's still very important. Are you able to continue your work in exile? Absolutely. Uh, all Russian journalists uh, uh, who have fled continue working. And I would say that um, we didn't have any political process for many years. There are no opposition politicians uh, in Russia. So uh, news um, media, uh, independent journalists are probably the most important political figures, political activists in today's uh, Russian society, because Russian society is everywhere now. Uh, Berlin, uh, Riga, Tel Aviv, uh, Dubai, um, uh, New York City, um, uh, many, many cities of America. There is the new huge wave of Russian immigration, up to one million people uh, who oppose Putin's war, and not, there is nothing that unifies them except for independent media. Can you foresee any circumstances under which you would want to return to Russia? I know that it's impossible until uh, Vladimir Putin is still president of this country. I hope that when he's not alive, the situation can get better. I'm sure that uh, the war against Ukraine um, will be stopped the moment when he's dead. And that's absolutely 100% the condition uh, of any possible future for Russia. First, Ukraine should win this war, and then we'll, we'll start to deal with our problems. For many Russians, that number one, the priority number one is the victory for Ukraine. But you, you seem to be saying nothing's really going to change, nothing's going to get better until I'm Vladimir afraid. Putin is I'm out afraid. of the way. I'm afraid so, yeah. And, you know, and I'm not, really, I'm not optimistic uh, about his departure as well, because I'm not sure that when he's gone, the system would collapse. As we know, after Stalin's death, Soviet Union existed for almost 40 more years. Mikhail Zigar, thank you very much. Thank you.